Hi friends, hope you are doing well. Today I'm going to talk about predatory conferences. And again, this is a thing which has come up in the last decade or so. And essentially these are conferences which are not really legitimate. They are conferences which attract a lot of papers, which charge a lot of registration fees. And they may even publish some proceedings. Typically these are published on some web page. And the aim of this exercise is actually to garner a lot of money out of the different authors, different researchers around the world and basically to enrich themselves. So this is another business enterprise on the lines of predatory journals. And this is something you need to be very careful about. So I recently came to know of a person who actually ended up going to such a predatory conference in London. And after presenting the paper in the conference, he realized that most of the people were actually presenting papers on various disparate fields. There was no coherence in the conference. It was something which was put together primarily to get money. So this is something to keep in mind. So I'm going to discuss several points today. In fact, eight points which you need to keep in mind if you want to avoid getting involved with predatory conferences. So let us begin. So the number one thing is that you should always research the organizers of a conference and most of the time good conferences are actually organized by some legitimate body. So this could be a university, it could be a professional society such as IEEE, ACM, APS or any of the societies in your field and so on. It could also be some established and legitimate professors for example in your field. So researching the organization is very easy nowadays with Google and so you can figure out different aspects about the organization. Be careful of some organizations whose name sounds very vague and general. For example, something such as the Institute of Science and Technology or things like that because it's too broad in scope. Most professional societies are actually pretty narrowly focused. So, for example, I used to present many papers in the European Rotograph Forum. So this is a very specific conference which essentially happens in European countries and the papers are in the Rotograph theme. So this is something which is legitimate. Now, the number two point is you should look at any organizations or professional societies which are holding this conference or which may be even affiliated to this conference. So whenever you find a legitimate society which is part of the conference, that is very good. Now, one of the things which researchers can keep in mind is that try to present papers in societies which are actually conducted or conferences which are actually conducted by professional societies. So there are important societies such as the IEEE which conducts conferences on various aspects of computing, electrical engineering and so on. There are societies like the APS, which is the physical society. It will conduct conferences on physics. That is societies such as SIAM, which will conduct different conferences on applied mathematics. So again, you get the point. Even if you are in psychology or in any field, there is going to be a conference associated with that particular field. Now, one of the safest things you can do is to present your paper in the same conference every year. So you will find many conferences are running each year. So there may be the 30th conference, the 70th year and so on. So these are again very legitimate conferences. If you go to the same conference every year, you present a paper or you present every two years, you become very well known in the field also. So that is a side effect of going to the same conference repeatedly. Now the third thing has to do with checking the conference website. And this is very important because the website design, the presence of grammatical errors, spelling mistakes and so on in a website are indicators that this is a somewhat shady conference body because very often what happens is that predatory conferences they are put together by nefarious actors and these guys may just recruit somebody to put up a web page as a front for this conference and these people are not very well learned people I should say these guys often make a lot of mistakes in their grammar. They make a lot of mistake in writing and so on. So you can very often figure these things out from the web page itself. Also look at the listed papers, look at the committee members, look at the speakers, the keynote speakers and so on and see if these are legitimate people. Now, of course, there are many predatory conferences which may get hold of some speakers from here and there to be part of the conference. So again, that is something you need to keep in mind. Now, the fourth issue has to do with 
don't go to conferences which have very broad themes so again something which is broad themed like conference on science and technology or conference on humans and society these are indicators that these guys simply want to get as many papers as they can they want to have as many registrations as possible and remember each registration may be even up to thousand dollars or so so if they garner a lot of registration they can actually end up making millions of dollars from the conference so that is the purpose of holding these predatory conferences so again try to go to conferences which are more specialized in terms of your field so that is certainly going to be advantageous to you and try to avoid going to broad theme conferences because many predatory conferences are very broad in theme now the fifth thing has to do with ease of submission so very often professional societies such as the ieee asme and so on they have pretty tough and rigorous conferences so you need to write a pretty good abstract this abstract is often reviewed in the case of some bodies you may even have to submit a paper and the paper is again reviewed so there are many conferences like that so again if you find the submission is very easy they are asking for a one page abstract they are asking for a paragraph abstract then it may be something which is very easy to get into now there are some workshops out there which are relatively easy but they are quite reputed so keep that in mind but i would say that in most cases legitimate conferences have rather difficult processes of getting in because a lot of people actually submit abstracts to these conferences and therefore not all of these abstracts can be accepted so what ends up happening is that maybe 40%, 50%, 20% of the abstracts are accepted. So again, that is something you need to remember. Now, the next point has to do with past proceedings. And again, conferences which have been going on for a long time, they typically have proceedings which have been going on for a long time also. And these proceedings are essentially bound volumes of the papers presented in the conference. In the olden days, these used to be actual volumes. Nowadays, these are brought out in terms of a CD or they may be simply given to you as a pen drive or they may be given to you as access to a particular web page. But what happens is that in many fields, these conference papers are often cited in journals also. So they are part of the complete history of the field. So if you take, for example, a body such as the IEEE and you look at its proceedings, you will find that a plethora of papers are actually published in their proceedings and you can access all this information by registering or becoming a member of IEEE or paying some money for that. So again, that is a sign that this is a pretty legitimate conference. You need to generally pay some money to access the intellectual property which the conference has created or which the conference has stored. So that is again a sign of legitimacy because generally something of value would require some money to be paid to get it. Now, the next point has to do with possibilities of publishing in high impact factor journals. And sometimes there are conferences which will tell you or lure you that if you submit an abstract there, if you write a paper there, they will publish some of these things in some high impact journal. Now, remember that this is a promise. It doesn't have to be true. So this may be simply a way to lure people so that they submit their papers there. And maybe they may collect out of a thousand papers, some five papers and just submit them to some top journal. That doesn't mean it will get accepted. And sometime remember that they may even submit it to some kind of predatory, predatory journal or to journals actually, which involve a lot of payment. So there are journals out there which will publish a paper, but they may require a lot of money to be paid to publish papers. So this may be thousand dollars or even more in some cases. So keep that in mind that just because they are saying that your paper is going to be published in a high impact factor journal doesn't mean it is actually going to be published in a high impact factor journal. Now, the final point has to do, of course, with checking with senior professors in your department, mentors, your own advisor if you are a PhD student and so on. So never just go ahead and submit a paper straight off because you got attracted to the website of a particular conference or to a call for papers. Make sure you do due diligence. It is just like making a big financial decision, buying a house, buying a car, choosing a college or so on. You need to give a lot of thought to planning about how to apply to a particular conference because remember it may be 
something which is easy to get into but then you have to do all kind of things if it's an international conference you have to get the visa you have to go to the consulate and so on you have to expend a lot of money in the thousands of dollars to book your tickets and then you have to go to that conference so don't get just attracted because the location is very good sometime a conference may be held in some nice location maybe it is being held in macau or it is held in dubai or it is held in london but be careful sometime nefarious actors are present in various locations around the world and they may congregate to host such a conference and make a lot of money out of people remember that in many developing countries around the world and in many european countries also a lot of money is given by the government to help the researchers to go to foreign conferences and one of the reason the predatory conferences has come up is that they want to exploit this money and they want it to help them to grow their conferences so again use this money wisely target going to good legitimate conferences typically sponsored by professional societies learned bodies and so on